In this clip, I will demonstrate how to use the uh, forecast package to estimate univariate time series models, in particular autoregressive models, and how to use such estimated models for forecasting. The example we're going to use is the uh, UK Consumer Price Index and the um, an inflation measure derived from that index. So before we get started, uh, and in case you want to replicate this, um, you need to have the following prep work done. Firstly, make sure that you have the forecast package installed um, into your R software. You should know what that means. If you don't know what that means, then you have to do more basic uh, R work first. Secondly, know the path to your working directory. And third, have a CSV file with the data in your working directory. So once you've done all that, I start with making the forecast library available. So I load the library, then I set my working directory. Of course, you will have to replace this path with the path to your working directory. And remember, we need forward slashes rather than backward slashes. Oh, I can't highlight, just have the cursor in the line and press run. So here we go. I set the working directory. Now I will import my data. Um, they are in ukcpi.csv. If your file is called differently, um, of course, you name that differently. So let me run this code. Here are my data. If we look at the data, you can see it's a spreadsheet for date information and actually the consumer price index. The first thing I do, and you will have to do that if you want to use the forecast package, you will have to make sure that R uh, recognizes the data as a time series. So the way to do that in R is to use the TS function. So our data are in a data frame con called inf underscore data. And as we've just seen here, the variable with our index is called UK CPI. So we're basically saying or telling R that this particular variable UK CPI in the data frame inf data should be defined as a time series on the basis of that particular column, UK CPI and inf data. And we give start dates, quarter one, 1988, and end dates, quarter four, 2015. And we tell R what sort of data frequency we have here. Four stands for quarterly data. So let's run this. That worked. And now let's have just a quick summary of our data. Here we can see that our UK CPI data are, we have a minimum 48 and a half and a maximum of 100.3. Uh, that doesn't have much of a, of a meaning by itself. It's an index. Um, you, you may remember that an index uh, is indexed to a particular period with the value 100. Uh, you can see that this has recently been uh, re-indexed this series because uh, the value of 100 is, is very recent. 100 will be the average of one of the years, possibly 2014. But I don't know from the top of my head. So that was the consumer price index. Now, what we are really interested, however, is the inflation measure. And that is, of course, just a change in the in the index. So let us use R to calculate this change. We use the diff function. What do we want to difference? We want to difference the inflation data, the UK CPI column in inf underscore data. And we define a new variable, D and D UK CPI. So let me just run this code. And now we have a new variable here, uh, DUK CPI. You can see it recognizes it as a as a time series as we had defined it as a time series. Now what we've calculated here is the change from quarter to quarter. Now sometimes it may be useful to actually not think about quarter to quarter changes. Uh, when you're thinking about inflation, but to think of year to year changes. The way how to do that, and I've prepared this line here, and let me just change the definition. 
is use the same command diff and of course from the same underlying series but now you say comma four that means not the difference between an observation and the predecessor observation but between the observation and four observations prior so if we have quarterly data as we have that will for instance take the difference between uh, the quarter four in 2015 and the quarter four in 2014 uh, and that's often done for inflation data amongst others that makes uh, problems with seasonalities um, much less apparent so let's actually define our inflation series according to this measure so i run and we've now overwritten what we had previously defined to be the UK CPI. So now we have the four quarter difference. So let's estimate an AR model. For this, we use the ARIMA function, which is part of the forecast uh, package. So unless you've called that package, that will not work. So ARIMA, what do we, what do we want to do? we are using our inflation series perhaps actually before we do that let's just plot this series it's always nice to see your series so we just say plot the uk cpi and here we have our inflation series um, you can see the data from um, 1988 to 2015 and we know that we uh, very recently in 2015 we've had very very low inflation uh, you can see much higher inflation in the early 90s and um, also quite high inflation in 2012 about so let's click this away these were our data so let's estimate an ar model so we use the arima function so it's a bit more general than just estimating um ar model it stands for auto regressive integrated moving averages and what we need as an input is the series on which we want to estimate the model and we need an order now what does that mean for the time being, for that, forget about these two zeros here. They refer to the integrated and to the MA of the process, but we are just interested in an AR model. So we switch the integration and the MA off by setting these terms to zero. This value here will give us the order of the AR model. So as we set it to one, we will estimate an AR1 model. So let's do this. Run and perhaps just look at our model so summary fit diff ar and here we can see the results of our ar model we have an intercept and an ar coefficient the way how our or this uh, particular function estimates ar models is in terms of deviations from the mean so this intercept is a mean deviation check the eclair uh, page on time series on r and then time series and will give you the exact model specification uh, in fact it's estimated such that conveniently this is an estimate of the unconditional mean and we can see that makes about sense on average our value is just our just below 2 1.7 in fact the ar coefficient is 0 0.935 approximately so that's a um, pretty strong persistence we also see uh, the estimated error variance here likelihood values information criteria uh, we're not going to talk about these anymore so let's just change let's say we wanted to estimate an ar4 model we would just change that to four and we run that model again and we could look at the summary again and now you can see that we have four ar coefficients uh, the t minus one t minus two t minus three and t minus four lag coefficient okay uh, the intercept remains the estimate of the unconditional mean but let's undo this again let's just stick with our 
um, AR1 model. So I'll run this again. And now let's say we want to use that model for forecasting. There's a very convenient function, again, part of the forecast uh, package. And actually that function is called forecast. And it takes as, a, as an input our estimated model, which we saved in fit underscore diff underscore AR. So we use that as an input. And we have to tell the function how many periods we want to forecast. I say h equals 12, that's 12 quarters, three years of data. So we run and uh, we get this forecast. You see we have a new, uh, a new data frame here, fit underscore diff underscore a r f. Uh, you can actually uh, just print this and you can see what this function has produced. Okay, so as you can see here, our last observation was quarter four, 2015. So the first forecast is for quarter one, 2016 and we're forecasting three years ahead. And what you can see is the point forecast. So that's the conditional expectation of the process, but we also get confidence intervals. So an 80% confidence interval will have the lower boundary here and the higher boundary here. A 95% confidence interval will be even uh, wider. As you can see, because we're having these lower boundaries in the negatives, there's, there are actually, there's positive probability that we get deflation in the next year, according to this forecast model. Now, often it's nicer to actually see graphical representations of these forecasts, and that's very easily achieved. We just use the plot function and we input our forecasts. So we can either just recall the entire forecast um, function, which we just used here. But since we saved this, it's perhaps better to actually just input our saved object. Okay? This is the object in which we saved the forecast. So we plot these and I'll say in a moment what this part does include equals 20. So let's just run this first. So here's our forecast. Now you can see this was our uh, inflation series. What this include 20 does is that it includes the last 20 observations. So the last five years of data of our actual series and then prints the forecasts. So here are the last five years of actual data and here are our forecast. The solid line is the uh, conditional expectation and the shaded areas represent the confidence intervals which we could uh, which we could see here. 